So we've seen that the change in chemistry energy is directly related to the change entropy of the universe. According to the second law of thermodynamics, for all spontaneous processes, change in entropy of universe increases. Remember, spontaneous does not mean instantaneous, means it occurs without any outside intervention. Now we can th think about Gibbs energy in terms of chemical potential energy. And so notice that the negative sign, so if you have a positive delta S of the universe, you have a negative delta G. And so a spontaneous process corresponds to going from a higher chemical potential energy to lower chemical potential energy. Remember, T is in terms of Kelvin, so it's always a positive number. Now we can also write down delta G in terms of delta H and delta S of the system. If you don't see a subscript for delta H and delta S, it's for the system. And so delta G equals delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system. So please do not get confused. Often students see the T delta S both times and don't realize they're different numbers. The top one is delta S for the universe, delta H minus T delta S. Those are two for the systems. It's kind of cool. We're able to go from change in entropy of the universe to change in enthalpy of the system and change in entropy of the system. Now also notice from D, delta G equals delta H minus D delta S, that if you assume delta H and delta S are temperature independent, that delta G depends explicitly on temperature. Now under small ranges in temperature, you can assume delta H and delta S are temperature independent. Not under, it's not, that's not a good approximation for large changes in temperature. And so today we'll talk about transition temperatures. By assuming that change in enthalpy and change in entropy of the system are temperature independent, we can actually calculate the transition temperature, the temperature to which the reaction goes from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous, when delta H and delta S have the same sign. What we'll see is that when delta H and delta S have the same sign, um, whether or not the reaction spontaneous does depend on temperature. And so what you should be able to do after watching this video is you should be able to determine if a reaction is always spontaneous, never spontaneous, or whether it depends on temperature. You should also be able to determine if the reaction is spontaneous and, and depends on temperature, you should be able to calculate the temperature that the reaction goes from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous. And so we can make a table assuming we have four different reactions. And so each row corresponds to a different reaction. And so for the top reaction, we have a change in enthalpy of 300 and change in entropy of 100. For the second reaction, we just happen to have a change in enthalpy of minus 300 and a change in entropy of 100. Now we can fill in the blanks assuming that we have a temperature of 3 over Kelvin. Now you should remember that delta S of surroundings is equal to minus delta H over T. Remember, delta H is actually just equal to Q. It's the amount of heat going from the surroundings to the system. And so negative would correspond to the heat going from the system to the surroundings. And so the, sur the surroundings entropy only increases if heat's being transferred to it. The only way that the surroundings entropy can increase is by heat going into it. And so if we take 300 for the all right, change in enthalpy, that means 300 kilojoules of heat is going from the surroundings to the system. So that should give us a negative delta S of surroundings. For the minus 300, that means 300 kilojoules of heat is going from the system to the surroundings, and so you'll get a plus change in entropy of the surroundings. Now, the change in entropy of the universe is just equal to the change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surroundings. And so for that top reaction, we have 100 minus 1,000, so that gives us negative 900. And so that top reaction should be non-spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius. And then our delta G, we can calculate either minus T delta S universe, or we can do delta H minus T delta S. We should get exactly the same value no matter which equation that we, sh we use. They, they are consistent. And so also remember that when you see that superscript zero on top, that means standard conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius. And so one question we can ask, which does the sign of delta G depend on temperature? And so if delta H and delta S have the same sign, then whether or not the reaction spontaneous will depend on temperature. And so for the top reaction and for the bottom reaction, spontaneity does depend on temperature. For two reactions in the middle, it does not depend on temperature. And again, we're assuming that delta H and delta S sort of system are temperature independent. So which is spontaneous at 300 Kelvin, which is about 298, which is about 25 degrees Celsius. And so if we have that negative delta G, that would correspond to a spontaneous process. So again, negative delta G corresponds to a positive delta S universe. Also, if you can think about delta G in terms of chemical potential energy, negative means you're going from higher potential energy to lower potential energy. So which is spontaneous at all temperatures, assuming delta H and delta S are temperature independent. And so remember, if delta H and delta S the system have the same sign, it depends on temperature. And so we look for delta G negative. 
And so the second one has delta G negative, and delta H and delta S have different signs. And so that's going to be spontaneous at all temperatures. The last one has delta G of negative, but notice that delta H and delta S have the same sign, and so spontaneity will, will depend on temperature. Which is non-spontaneous at all temperatures, assuming that delta H and delta S are temperature independent. And so again, if we think about it, delta G has to be positive, and delta H and delta S have to have the same sign, uh, cannot have the same sign. And so if we look at the third one, we see delta G is positive, and delta H and delta S of the system have different signs. And so that one will be non-spontaneous at all temperatures. And so we have four possibilities. Spontaneous at high temperatures, non-spontaneous at low temperatures, always spontaneous, always non-spontaneous, spontaneous at low temperatures, non-spontaneous at high temperatures. And again, we're assuming that delta H and delta S of the system are temperature independent. And again, the superscript zero corresponds to 25 degrees Celsius. And the assumption about delta H and delta S being temperature independent is only good for small temperature ranges. It's also kind of cool if you think about this equation, delta G equals delta H minus D delta S, it tells you that enthalpy is more important at low temperatures and entropy is more important at high temperatures because of that T term. And so delta G equals delta H minus D delta S, um, the reaction goes from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous when delta G equals zero. And so if we set delta G to zero, we can solve for T and we get T equals delta H over delta S. And so T represents the transition temperature, the temperature to which the reaction goes from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous. And so we can ask ourselves at what temperature does the following go from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous? We just plug it into the equation. Now again, we have to be very careful. Delta H is typically kilojoules per mole. Delta S is typically joules per mole Kelvin. And so we either have to change enthalpy to joules per mole or entropy to kilojoules per mole like I did in this example. And so always watch your units. And so we see at 3000 Kelvin, that is the transition temperature. Now again, this is probably isn't a very good approximation because under that wider temperature range, delta H and delta S will not be temperature independent. We can look at another example. And so in the following reaction, is it spontaneous or non-spontaneous? And so we're given delta H and delta S. And so since both delta H and delta S have the same sign, the spontaneity direction of the reaction depends on temperature. And so we can ask ourselves, at what temperature does the reaction go from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous? And so again, T equals delta H over delta S. We make sure that we have our units cancel. And so our delta H is in kilojoules, our delta S is in kilojoules. And we do the math and we get 463.7 Kelvin, which is equal to 190.5 degrees Celsius. And so that's gonna be our transition temperature. And so above 190 degrees Celsius, the, react, the reverse reaction is spontaneous. Below 190 degrees Celsius, the forward reaction is spontaneous. And again, the higher the temperature, the more important the delta S term. We saw that delta S was negative, and so a higher temperature is going to lead us to believe that's going to be a, a non-spontaneous reaction. We can look at a reaction that we're all familiar with, just the boiling of water, liquid to gas. Again, we have the enthalpies of formation, entropy, and Gibbs free energy of formation. And again, those are standards, so that corresponds to 25 degrees Celsius. And so we can calculate the change for this process. And so delta H for the reaction is products minus reactants. And so we get minus 242 minus minus 286 gives us plus 44 kilojoules. And so that means heat has to be added to go from liquid to gas. The enthalpy of the gas is always greater than enthalpy of the liquid. We can calculate delta S. That's going to be, product, again, products minus reactants, but 189 minus 0 0.0699. And so that gives us a positive 0.119 kilojoules. And again, gases have higher entropy than liquids and higher enthalpy than liquids. And so in this case, both our enthalpy, change in enthalpy and our change in entropy are positive. We can calculate delta G. And so minus 229 minus 237. And so we get a positive delta G. And so for this reaction to proceed, that would be increasing the chemical potential energy. And so that's not going to be spontaneous at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, the liquid is more stable than the gas at 25 degrees Celsius. Again, standard conditions, 25 degrees Celsius. So at 29, 25 degrees Celsius, the forward, forward reaction is not spontaneous because delta G is positive, and the reverse reaction is spontaneous. Remember, delta G for the forward reaction is equal to minus delta G for the reverse reaction.
at 25 degrees Celsius, we could also say that the system is reactant favored. And so we have our delta H and we have our delta S. And so they have the same sign that tells us that the spontaneity of this reaction depends on temperature. Now we can calculate the temperature, the transition temperature, by setting delta G to zero. And so again, we have T, transition temperature equals delta H over delta S. And so 44 kilojoules over 0.119 kilojoules per Kelvin gives us 370 Kelvin, which is 97 degrees Celsius. Now we know the answer should be 100 degrees Celsius. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius under one atmosphere of pressure. But again, in this calculation, we're assuming delta H and delta S are temperature independent, which isn't always a good approximation. Here we have a change in temperature of about 75 degrees, 75 degrees. And so under that temperature range, it's delta H and delta S are not temperature independent. They're a little bit off, they change a little bit. And that's why we calculate 97 degrees Celsius instead of 100 degrees Celsius. But still, it's pretty good considering we got these numbers from the table. And so below 97 degrees Celsius, the reverse reaction is spontaneous. Above, the forward reaction is spontaneous. And again, these 97 degrees Celsius should actually be 100 degrees Celsius. Again, because delta H and delta S does change a little bit with temperature. And so below 100 degrees Celsius, the react its reaction is reactant favored. Above 100 degrees Celsius, the reaction is product favored. The higher the temperature, the more important that delta S term. And so again, our delta S is positive. And so when delta H and delta S are both positive, because delta S is more important at higher temperature, that tells you it's going to be spontaneous at high temperature, non-spontaneous at low temperature. And so we all know what happens with water and, and ice. You know, we could do the same, same sort of analysis here for ice going to liquid. Um, we know above, above zero degrees Celsius, this process is spontaneous. Below zero degrees Celsius, this process is non-spontaneous. We could look at another reaction, 2NO2 to 2NO204. And again, we get these numbers from a table corresponding to 25 degrees Celsius. And so we can calculate delta H as being minus 57. And so that means Q is negative. So heat's going from the system to the surroundings. And so delta S of the surroundings will increase. That corresponds to an exothermic reaction. We can calculate delta S, and so we see delta S is negative. And so the entropy of the, of the system is going down. And so for this reaction, entropy of the surroundings increases because it's exothermic, and the entropy of the system goes down. And so you have both the entropy of the system and entropy of the surroundings are kind of in, in conflict, and that's why um, the spontaneity of the reaction depends on temperature. We can calculate delta G products minus reactants. We get minus four kilojoules. And so at 25 degrees Celsius, this reaction should be spontaneous. But is it true for all temperatures? Knowing that delta H and delta S have the same sign, it tells us no. And so because delta S for this reaction is negative, that tells us that this is gonna be non-spontaneous at high temperature. Entropy is more important at high temperature. And it's gonna be spontaneous at low temperature. We can calculate the temperature. We get 324 degrees Kelvin. Sorry, 324 Kelvin. That's the transition temperature. It goes from being spontaneous to non-spontaneous. And so above 324, it's non-spontaneous. Below 324, it is spontaneous. And so it's kind of cool. We can plot the Gibbs free energy as a function of the reaction coordinate. And so on the left, we have only reactants. On the, on the right, we have only products. And so if your delta G is negative, that means the products have lower potential energy. And so your reaction is going to be more product favored. Gaseous NO2 converts to N2O4 under certain conditions. When the system is at a low temperature, equilibrium for the reaction is reached after a high percentage of the reactants have converted to product. The difference in energy between delta G zero and the free energy at the equilibrium point is relatively slight. The equilibrium constant is high. And so the minimum in that plot corresponds to the most stable configuration for the system. And so that's where the system should end up at. And so in this case, your delta G is negative, and so the system is going to end up having mostly products.
and then above 324 degrees Celsius, your delta G is positive, and so the reactants are more stable. And so as you change the temperature, what's happening is this minimum actually goes down. And so for this reaction, as you lower the temperature, the minimum actually goes to the right. And so please make sure you can understand and apply all these e equations. You know, enthalpy, entropy, Gibbs-Rayner energy, they're all state functions, so, so we can calculate them doing products mass reactants. We define delta G as being minus D delta S universe. We can also calculate delta G as delta H minus D delta S as system. Again, please don't get confused. T delta S system is not the same as T delta S universe. And we can calculate the transition temperature as being delta H over delta S. Please make sure that you watch your units because typically delta H is in terms of kilojoules per mole and delta S is in terms of joules per mole Kelvin.